Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about the different zones in which the water is stored in the reservoir. So let's start. Now, whatever discussion that we will be carrying out regarding the storage zones of a reservoir, that will be with respect to the given figure. So as you can see, across a river, an object, a barrier has been constructed, which is known as the dam. Now behind this dam, there is a pool of water, which is stored and that is known as the reservoir. So up to the top level, this is the water level, which is being stored here. And within the body of the dam, you can see there is this dotted line, which is a structure that is constructed within the body of the dam, so as to provide a channel for the water, which is stored behind this barrier, so that the water through it can strike the turbine, which is placed in front of it. And that moves the turbine and ultimately the electricity is generated. Now the level of the water in this reservoir that is classified according to the different amount of water which is present in it. So the first zone of the reservoir that is known as the normal pool level or the maximum conservation level. Now what is this? It is the maximum elevation to which the reservoir water surface will rise during the normal operating conditions. So we can say that easily during the most of the normal conditions, the maximum elevation to which the water surface rises, that is this is the up to the crest of the dam or the spillway that is the maximum level so it is equivalent to the elevation of the spillway crest or the top of the spillway gate next one is the minimum pool level now what is this so the name itself suggests that it is the lowest water surface elevation which has to be kept under the normal operating conditions in a reservoir so if the river is not recharging the reservoir then also we have to maintain this minimum level and that is known as the minimum pool level and it is fixed by the elevation of the lowest outlet in the dam or is guided by the minimum head which is required for efficient functioning of the turbines so if we are having the sluiceway at this position which is the last of the outlet point that means we have to maintain the minimum pool level corresponding to this sluiceway or the outlet and that will dictate the value of the head which will govern the functioning of this turbine which is placed across it the next of the water level is useful and the dead storage so the volume of water which is stored in a reservoir between the minimum pool level that means that is the minimum amount of water which cannot be used and the normal pool level that is the maximum amount of water under the normal condition the difference between these two level that is the amount of water which can be used and that is why that is known as the useful storage looking in the figure so this difference between the minimum pool level and the normal pool level that is the useful storage then next of the storage is known as the dead storage so the water which is stored in the reservoir below the minimum pool level that is dead because we cannot use that water for our daily needs or for the irrigation purposes or for the efficient functioning of the reservoir. 
and that is why it is known as the dead storage and is not of much use in the operation of the reservoirs. So the useful storage that we are having between the minimum pool level and the normal pool level that is further subdivided into the conservation storage and the flood mitigation storage if we are talking about the multi-purpose reservoir. So this water below this minimum pool level that is known as the dead storage. The next one is the maximum pool level or the full reservoir level. So as you can see that during the high floods the water is even allowed over the spillway. What will be its impact on the reservoir that in this case the water level will rise in the reservoir above the normal pool level. Now the maximum level during the flood times to which the water rises and that is during the worst design flood that is known as the maximum pool level or the FSL that is the full service reservoir level. So this level is representing the maximum level when we are observing the worst type of the flood. Then the next one is the surcharge storage. Now this volume of water which is stored between the normal pool level and the maximum pool level that is known as the surcharge storage. In literal terms this surcharge means the extra. So the extra amount of water which is stored now between the normal pool level and the maximum pool level during the flood times is known as the surcharge storage. And it is an uncontrolled storage because that exists only during the flood and it cannot be retained because the structure is designed for this maximum condition during the normal operating conditions that is known as the normal pool level that is what we designed for but this is extra and it cannot be retained and the next term is the bank storage so when the reservoir is filled up certain amount of water it seeps into the permeable reservoir banks the sides or the walls of the reservoir they absorb certain amount of the water now let's say this is the first condition when the water level was here and the surrounding water table was here in the second condition this is the water level in the reservoir and the water table is at this position. So in the first condition, the water will flow from the higher condition to the lower condition and there will be penetration into the banks and there will be certain percolation losses. Now this water will drop down during the summer season or when the demand is high. So this water level in the reservoir has dropped down below the water table. Now in that case the water will come out of these banks and will recharge the reservoir. So the water which is seeping into the banks it comes out as soon as the reservoir it gets depleted. This volume of water which is going inside into the bank is known as the bank storage and it may amount to the several percentage of the reservoir volume depending how much fissures or the cracks are available that means it would depend on the geological formations. Now what is the advantage of this bank storage? So it effectively increases the capacity of the reservoir above that indicated by the elevation capacity curve of the reservoir because that is the additional storage that we have not accounted for in the designing and that is useful when the level of the water in the reservoir is going down. So that's why it is an additional volume. Last of the storage is the valley storage. So even before a dam is constructed there is always certain amount of water which is stored in the stream and that minimum water which was 
already present in the channel when there was no dam that is known as the valley storage that was because of its topography now when this reservoir is formed obviously the storage increases and actual net increase in the storage that is measured with respect to the natural valley storage because that is the contribution of the reservoir earlier the valley storage was already available above that whatever capacity we are achieving that would be amounting to the storage capacity of the reservoir so this valley storage thus reduces the effective storage capacity of a reservoir and it is not of much importance when we are talking about the conservation reservoir in which we want to conserve the water but when the available storage for the flood mitigation is considered that is also reduced because in that case what is happening let's say this is the obstruction that is the dam and this is the water which is getting stored and this was the level which was already being stored even though the construction of the dam was not carried out so this is the effective storage so this much amount of the volume is being wasted out because of the valley storage so the effective storage when we consider for the flood mitigation that is this useful storage plus this surcharge storage so this effective one will be the total of these two minus this valley storage which is corresponding to the rate of inflow in the reservoir if we look at the figure so this minimum level that has been shaded out that is representing the depth of the water that is always available in this stream above the stream bed so that is representing the natural stream surface before the construction of the dam this completes the discussion regarding the different storage zones of our reservoir now in the next video we will take a look at the reservoir sedimentation and what are the measures to control it thank you